references. Number one, the Bible, preferably the King James Version. Number two, the Book of Mormons, the present edition. Number three, Doctrine and Covenants, which was formerly called the Book of Commandments. Number four, Pearl of Great Price, 1982 edition. Number five, General Authorities and Continual Revelation, Types of Revelation, Prophecy, Visions, Inspired Speeches, The Gift and Power of God to Translate, which was only possessed by Joseph Smith. Other Supplementary Materials Number 1. Insign Magazine This contains teachings and speeches of Mormon authorities. Number 2. The Yahona Magazine This word means compass or director in the Book of Mormon. It contains letter from the First Presidency, youth and children articles, and others. Number three, Melchizedek Priesthood Personal Study Guide. This is an unusual study guide for every Mormon member. Unbiblical Beliefs. Number one. Redefine the word Trinity as relating to purpose and not to their nature. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost have three distinct bodies and therefore are three gods who are perfect in knowledge, power, and glory. The Holy Spirit currently has only a spirit body. Believes God the Father, also known as Elohim, has literal flesh and bones. Number two, Joseph Smith taught that because the Hebrew word for God, Elohim, is a plural noun, this proves there are many gods. Actually, this is where Eliseo Soriano also got his doctrine. Number three, teaches that the image and likeness of God in man also proves that God is a man. Number four, believes that there are many gods in the heavens where spirit children are born. Each god has his own wife or wives given to him during his mortal state. Each god, through his wife or wives, produces numerous sons and daughters. Then, if their heavenly inheritance becomes too small to accommodate his spirit children, he organizes a new world along with his sons. He now sends his spirit son and daughter to dwell in flesh and bones. They will inhabit the earth and multiply physically. Each inhabitant is required to reverence, adore, and worship their own personal Father in Heaven, where they formerly inhabited. Number 5. Believes Jesus' personal name is Jehovah, which was begotten by his father Elohim through six sexual union with Mary. Number six, believes Lucifer is the spirit brother of Jesus Christ. Number seven, believes there are distinction between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. A, the Holy Ghost is a spirit child born of heavenly parents. It has the shape of a man. 
he can only be in one location at a time and is one of three gods in the Godhead. B. The Holy Spirit is a divine eminence or influence can be felt by Mormons universally and bears witness to the truths of Mormonism. Number eight, beliefs about Christ, atonement, and salvation. A, there are two effects of Christ's atonement. B, all humankind will be resurrected. C, it sets one on the road to exaltation or godhood. So Mormons can become gods and found their own spiritual realm or worlds. D. Christ's atonement took place in the Garden of Gethsemane where his sweat great drops of blood. E. Christ's atonement was only for Adam's transgression and only for Adam. F. Salvation, individual salvation, begins with the atonement but is completed through human works. Such as, number one, since some sins cannot be covered by Christ's atonement, People must atone for these sins themselves. 2. Baptism is a necessary human work and can be applied by proxy to the deceased. 3. There are three degrees of heaven. Number 1. The Celestial Kingdom they say this is located on earth after its renewal is prepared for the, for the righteous, those who have been faithful in keeping the whole commandments and have been cleansed of all their sins. Number two, the celestial kingdom. This will be located on some other planet other than the earth. Number three, the terrestrial kingdom. This kingdom will be found on still another earth. The wicked people will be in this degree. Methods of witnessing to the Mormons. Do not witness to a Mormon member or Mormon missionaries unless you yourselves are properly grounded and equipped because you may end up being their convert. Set a time and, and a place so that no one could distract all four of you. Four composes the two Mormon missionaries or member, including one Christian to pray and intercede while the other shares the gospel. Once the Mormon missionaries ask if you would want to open or close a prayer, always say yes so that you can pray an evangelistic kind of prayer. Since they will usually start by showing you some pictures to visualize their prophet Joseph Smith, prepare to ask some questions pertaining to your discussions which will make them think and be challenged to research and study the Bible alone by their own. One example I can give you is written in their pamphlet, Study Guide 1, entitled, The Plan of Our Heavenly Father. Mormon, have you read the Study Guide 1 already? Do you have any questions regarding that topic? Christian Well, yes. I believed I have 
in this is regarding the short note here, which states are children of God in Genesis 1, 26-27, Acts 17-29, Romans 8, 16-17, Mormon, yes, it is true that we are all children of God since we are all created by Him. Christian, I don't think the Bible, the KJV, will agree with your beliefs since John 1, 12 tells us that only those who receive Jesus in their heart can become a child of God. Well, all the verses that your pamphlet quoted are out of context. Why? Because Genesis 1, 26-27 tells of God creating man and does not speak about men beca- becoming his children. While Acts 17-29 and Romans 8, 16-17 tells us about Paul talking to those who have already become Christians by receiving Jesus in their hearts. So why do you still suppose that all men are children of God? By the way, I have already invited Jesus in my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Have you? After the discussion, see to it that you remind them to search for the answers to your questions. That would challenge them to think. And that you are willing to talk to them once more if ever they return. If you need help in witnessing, you may ask some more like apologists to help you. If they ask you to pray with a sincere heart, whether the Book of Mormons is true or not, tell them that the, that is very subjective. Why? Because anybody can pray for the other, any religious book like the Quran of the Muslims, New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses or the sacred books and literatures of the other Eastern religions and still could possibly receive a burning in the bosom. Tell them to follow the attitude of the Berean Christians that they search the scriptures daily whether what the Apostle Paul said was true in Acts 17.11. The same Apostle admonishes each one in 1 Thessalonians 5.21 to prove all things, which includes the Book of Mormons. This is why Christianity is not a leap in the dark. Before they leave, ask permission if you could pray for them. If so, pray again an evangelistic kind of prayer and let the Holy Spirit do the final penetration in their heart. Things to remember when witnessing to Mormons. 1. Ask the Lord to guide you and allow the Holy Spirit to give you power in witnessing to these kind of people. Never rely on your own capabilities to convert a person, but rather leave the results to God. Number 2. Use the King James Version as your scripture and use their Book of Mormon to contradict what they believe in the pearl of great price and doctrines and covenants. Although you may use the Book of Mormon only to prove that their teachings contradict, unlike the inspired writers of the scripture that never contradict each other. Number three. Remember the scripture verses in quotations before you witness so to avoid idle time in between conversation. Number four, always remember the things they've said so that you can point out their organization's contradictions. Number five, never point at them as the source of false teachings, but rather the LDS authorities. Witness with a sincere love, compassion, and wisdom. 
how to start a conversation with a Mormon Christian. I noticed that you are wearing a name tag in the lapel. Are you a Mormon? Mormon. Yes. Are you? Christian. No, I'm not. By the way, is it okay if I ask you a few questions about your faith? Mormon. Why, yes, of course. I would be glad to assist you with your inquiry. What's your question? Christian. Which of the four books, Bible, Book of Mormon, The Pearl of Great Price, and Doctrines and Covenants is the first revelation of God? Mormon. Well, of course, the Bible. Christian. Which of the four books I've mentioned contains the old revelation? Mormon. The Bible. Christian. Therefore, the remaining three books contain the new revelation of God? Mormon. Yes. Christian. Do you believe that God contradicts himself? Mormon. No. Christian. Since God does not contradict himself, and we have the first revelation, which is the Bible, in the three new revelations here, therefore, it is only proper to judge the new revelation by the older revelation, right? You can either refuse or change the topic. Christian, can I ask another question? Yes. Christian. Is it true that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the only true church? Mormon. Yes. Christian. And is it true that all Christian churches have been apostatized after the Apostles' death? Mormon. Yes. They may not be consistent with this answer, but the fact is there has been a time when all Christian churches cease to exist until the time before Joseph Smith established the Latter-day Saints Church. Christian, do you believe that in every generation there are no true churches to glorify God? Mormon, yes. If the Mormon says, well, there may be some, then respond by saying, Therefore, it is not true that the Christian church has been apostatized, and Joseph Smith has been lying after all. In Joseph Smith, History 119, that all churches are wrong and their creeds are an abomination. Christian, then, how can you explain Ephesians 3.21? And to him be glory in the church throughout all ages. In Greek, genea or generation. World without end. Amen. Do you think God cannot preserve his flock from Satan's deception? If God was able to preserve 7,000 prophets in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him, 1 Kings 1918 And Elijah thought he was the only one left in verse 10 Can God not be consistent with the preservation of his saints throughout all the ages and generation Do not allow the Mormon to jump to another verse unless he explains to you full what this verse means Watch for perverted in out of context interpretations. Additional scriptures, texts, Matthew 28 20, Jude 24 and 25.